Paranormal Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network. Since the beginning of time, people have argued about the existence of ghosts. They've been called variously wraiths, specters, phantoms, apparitions, shadows or shades. But everyone agrees that if there are such things as ghosts, they are the souls of dead persons haunting living persons. This is Malcolm Robinson and you're listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Network, the UK's biggest paranormal network, and this is Paranormal Dimensions with David Young. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you for that intro, Malcolm. Okay, today's show is what I'm calling a Halloween special, although it's going to be a little bit more serious than um, the fun and games of Halloween. We've actually got the Memphis Ghost Investigations and Spirit Rescue team on, which consists of Stephen Williams and Kayla Bells. Now, Stephen is a former member of the Ghost Stalkers of West Tennessee from 2002 to 2006, and a former member of the Memphis Mid-South Ghost Hunters from 2006 to 2016. Currently, he directs Memphis Ghost Investigations and Spirit Rescue, which he founded in October 2018. The other half of the team is Kayla Bells, and she's a gifted clairvoyant and clairaudient spiritual rescue medium who has been experienced in spirit communication since childhood. Child spirits are particularly drawn to Kayla's youthful and compassionate energy, which is a tremendous asset in getting their, their attention and trust. Also joining me today is the lovely Juliet Gregson, making another return visit as co-host. So uh, I'll introduce Juliet in a moment. But just before that, I'll just read out my email address in case you'd like to get in touch, uh, making any comments or insults or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Uh, it's David Young 2QN at yahoo.co.uk. I'll just read that again. It's David Young 2QN, all one word, at yahoo.co.uk. Okay. Anyway, here's Juliet. Hello, Juliet. Hello, David. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. You've been working hard, I understand. I have. I've only just finished work, actually. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, well, we're recording this at a different time to usual, aren't we? Yes, because I think we both thought it was seven o'clock, sort of UK. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, what? Well, like, with, no. with the clock change and everything, I, I was actually confused. I thought it was a bit later. But anyway, tonight we're going to be talking to the Memphis Ghost Investigations and Spirit Rescue, which sounds good. And mm. uh, and it's Stephen Williams and Kayla Bales, I think it. I'm not sure if it's Bayless or Bales. We we'll have to get that put right, won't we, to make sure we've. Uh, oh yes, uh, I think it's Bales actually, but. Um, I mean, I know I know Memphis pretty well. I've been here so many mm. times. It's uh, it, it's great. You, you know? said, so, yeah. So I'm hopeful. It's, it's it's sort of like um, where where rock and roll was born, really, and everything. And um, well, not only rock and roll, but jazz as well. I understand. So, it's definitely going to be interesting to hear what they've got to say. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Well, what we'll do is um, we'll invite them on straight away, shall we? Unless you've got anything more to wrap it on about. No. no <laughs> looking forward to this one. <laughs> okay. Hello, Stephen and Kayla. Welcome to the show. Hey. Thank you for having us. That's great. It's great to talk to you. And um, you're you're the Memphis in Ghost Investigations and Spirit Rescue. Now, it all sounds very thrilling to me because I know Memphis pretty well. Um, well. I say pretty well, probably not as well as you do, but <laughs> but um, you know, I do I do know you know my way around it pretty well because I've been to Grace. I'm a, I'm a, everyone that knows me knows I'm a big Elvis fan, and um, I've been to Grace several times and uh, like Sun Studios and everything. Um, hopefully, you've got some Elvis 
me stories or something for me. <laughs> certainly do. <laughs> Great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, Dominic, do you want to tell us a bit about what you actually do and what you get up to, and um, you know about your investigations, about your team and everything? Well, uh, Kayla and I have been working together a couple of years. Kayla is a clairvoyant and clairaudient um, rescue medium, and I'm a clairsentient uh, investigator. I do have some of those other abilities too, but they're not my strong suit. So we uh, we just uh, go into people's homes in this area uh, when they're having uh, spirit activity and disturbances, and we uh, try to connect with those spirits and to uh, do some counseling with them. And to help them uh, release and transition, which is uh, helpful to the homeowners. All their their troubles seem to uh, go away pretty quickly after that, and their lives return to normal. And the spirits are able to continue their journey and have more experiences and a better uh, a better awareness, I guess you'd say. Mm, certainly. Do you do you ever experience any uh, poltergeist activity? Yes, a couple of times uh, I've had had objects thrown not at me but uh, across the room, and I've seen objects uh, that have been moved and that type of thing. Wow. Yes, I've never experienced that. I've probably been on ghost hunts and things where you do things like table tipping, and um, I mean I'm, I'm not clairvoyant or anything like that. But um, I'm not sure about Juliet. Are you? Do you are, you're a little bit um, clairvoyant, aren't you, Juliet? I am and I'm not. It's a bit of a weird one when somebody well, sort of tries to pin, you can't, you pin can't me down. You can't be both, can you? <laughs> no. It's weird because I had a very old medium friend, she's passed now, called Paula Paradima. And she says, you have talent, but certain things you just shouldn't do. And I said, well, like what? And the, the, the mm. weird thing was I was actually rounded by an Alistair Crowley book. Please don't judge me for that. They are an interesting <laughs> reading. However, and she says, there's things that if you did and you sort of progressed and did that, it could be quite dangerous for you. And she wasn't the only one who's already said that. There have been other mediums that have said that to me. Mm. And I thought, well, I see things, I hear things. And I, you know when you sort of think, yes, I can do this, but there's another part of you that says, no, I can't. I've never been in a position where I can sort of do what you guys do, if that makes sense. Because Mm -hmm. I find, we may discuss this later on, there's an element of like, you know, people go to a house and it's like, oh, and then they film and it's all about the YouTube stats and how much money they can make. I love hearing what you guys have just said about you're you're trying to help them transition. So to me, that's like, wow, thank you. Just, you know, (laughs) whatever we end up discussing, I just want to thank you both for doing that. Yeah, because as I understand it, you do most things for free. Is that right, Stephen? Do everything and Kayla? for free, yeah. yeah. I've never accepted any payment for anything. Yeah, and that's kind of the way it should be. But, I mean, you must yeah. get your, your, do you not try to get your expenses covered and things like that sometimes? Not at all. Not no, at all. We, we cover that ourselves. Really? Um, it's just kind of service work for us, it really is. So yeah. It's a, it's a donation of our time and our uh, gifts and everything, and we just feel like it's needed. And uh, most people will go in and, and their focus is on the collection of evidence. And they're not really trying to affect a positive change. Uh, so the people that are experiencing these types of disturbances, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. You know, and many times they'll move from a property because they just can't uh, can't tolerate it. You know, it's as bad as that. Yeah. Hmm. No, it's great to hear. Anyway, let's hear a little bit from Kayla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> hello. Um, apparently you grew up with um, a, a, a young uh, with a friend, a, a secret friend. Is that right? I did uh, too, actually. Ah, right. Is it something that uh, your your parents didn't know about? So my family is originally from Louisiana, and my mother's side of the family, they're all very gifted or in touch, very t- in touch in a sense. Right. And my mother, luckily, was always very encouraging and helped me understand some of the things I was experiencing. Now she wasn't necessarily educated in the psychic or medium sense when it comes to terms and hmm. understanding a little more in depth, but for what she did understand. It really did help me. But the house I grew up in did have two entities. There was a little girl named Lillian who stayed in my room in the closet. That was her favorite place to be. And then there's an older gentleman named Carter 
my mom always referred to him as the man in the hallway, which would sound kind of scary as a child, mm. but so, okay. So, oh, well, I mean, so, but was it scary to you? Sometimes I would be a little anxious about it, but it was always very exciting to me. I was very curious. I've always been very curious and wanted to dabble or understand what was going on. And uh, my mother actually helped a lot with me not being scared because mm. me, I have three older sisters and one little sister. Now, the older ones, they would complain about someone being in the room scaring them. So my mom would go in and be like, all right, well, I'm going to tell them to go away, but don't cry when you want them to come back. So mm-hmm. it was it was very <laughs> normalized in my house when it came with stuff like that. They mm-hmm. would joke about it just randomly all the time. So when did you actually realize it was actually people on the other side and not actually... Um I'm not, I'm not trying to, not real human beings, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, right, like right. spiritual people. Because obviously they, 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 they were, they were, they'd had their lives previously, but obviously, but, um. Yeah. It's you know a very interesting journey and experience because I have always, I've always been as clairaudient and clairvoyant as I am now. I just didn't realize that. I did not comprehend it at the time what I was experiencing. So it wasn't honestly until I was, say, 20, 21. Right. And when I started doing this work with Stephen is really when I started learning a lot of things. And I've been to metaphysical classes and other studies, and those have helped me along the way. But I really didn't realize that all my psychic abilities and my communication skills until I had gone to a reunion and met Stephen. Right. So when was that? Uh, when was that, Stephen? When was the reunion? That was uh, about two years ago in September of 2018. And oh. what what occurred there was um, they had a public platform mediumship demonstration like they do in the spiritualist churches in England. Yeah. And uh, we had uh, we had a reunion. Uh, we have a teacher who gets all her all of her former students together uh, once a year. And so Kayla had the opportunity to go before a large audience and do readings, and she'd never done that before. Wow. And she brought someone's aunt through and gave a message, and then she started talking about this little girl. And she started describing uh, a little spirit girl who was around me and has been around me for years. She's actually a spirit rescue from St. Augustine, Florida, right. who uh, will call, when we call upon her services, she will actually help us when we're doing spirit rescues involving children. But Kayla could see her, and she was very persistent and... Um, I knew who she was describing, so later I went up and talked to Kayla about it, and uh, at that point I decided to form this new this new group that we have. So this little girl's name is Alice, and she was kind of the catalyst for, for our new group um, coming to creation at that time about two years ago. Right, so, so, it's, it's really, so it's just really you, you and Kayla in the team, is it? We do have another friend. Uh, his name is Stevie Monty Smith. He's a, he's a very gifted young medium. Uh, he's uh, been trained, actually, by Robert Brown, uh, who's a medium in, in England. Um, and uh, he helps us occasionally. He's kind of like a guest investigator at this point. Uh, but uh, he's he's helped out several times. So it's really... There was a, a another young lady named Jennifer Brooks that helped us in the beginning, and uh, she said to focus on other things, and she had to leave our group. So re- really right now it's uh, Kayla, and Kayla and I are the two main uh, components of the team, and then Stevie will sometimes help us out if we need some help. Right. Now, I said earlier, I'm, I was just, I'm a big Elvis fan, so uh, <laughs> I, I know Memphis <laughs> pretty well, and... Um, as I say, I don't know if you've got any Elvis stories for us or any other, because I know, I mean, really, it's the birth of rock and roll and really jazz, wasn't it, Memphis? Really, in the right. early days. So, um. Well, you said you've been to Graceland, correct? Oh, several times, yeah. I've okay. seen, I've seen it change over the years. They, they have different sort of displays all the time. Every time I go, it's something different. <laughs> So I have a, a medium friend named Linda from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Right. Um, she was actually involved in that spirit rescue of Alice uh, back in 2007. That's how I met her. Right. And she she kind of introduced me to the concept of spirit rescue, and she's she's probably the world's biggest Elvis fan. And so when she came to now she can't time, be. I am. <laughs> well, well, maybe because they're tied up. I don't know. But she is fanatic. Yeah. Actually, so. 
she had never been to Graceland, uh, oddly enough. So when she came to Memphis, uh, I took her and another medium friend of mine, and we went into the house. And that first room to the right, when you walk up the steps yeah. and into yeah. the foyer, there's a room to the right that has a big white piano. Yeah. Well, no. And uh, at that time, I guess it's still like that. It's but, still at the um, back, yeah. There's like a separate alcove part with the, with the white right. piano, yeah. Right, so I was standing and kind of leaning against the, the uh, door there, and uh, my friend Linda was next to me, and the other lady was was beside her. And uh, at one point, after we stepped in there, she Linda kind of collapsed into me, and I asked her, "What's wrong? You know, what, what's going on?" And she said, "Well, he came up behind me and kissed me on the neck." <laughs> so she's clairvoyant, and she could see him, and so he came up and gave her a really friendly greeting. And the other medium also confirmed that he was there. I could feel his energy because I'm clear sentient. Hmm. So yeah, so she got to meet her idol. <laughs> so he still visits there then wow. on occasion. Uh, yeah, I think he's there. You know, um, and the way that she described him, both of them described him independently. Uh, described his appearance was he looked like he was in his absolute prime, uh, maybe in his uh, mid twenties, late twenties. Uh, just just a beautiful, you know, beautiful man like he was at that time hmm. and. Uh, so I guess you know he. I've always heard that spirits tend to present themselves in in uh, in their prime. So he certainly did that day. Yeah. Uh, well, I know um, Lisa Marie spends a lot of time there, so perhaps he's there watching her, or watching over her, and uh, you know, mate, I don't know. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was very interesting. Um, what about um, Sun Records, the, the Sun Studios? Have you uh, ever visited there and got any experiences? Have you, Kayla? You've been to some studios? Yeah, on yeah. Union Avenue. I've actually never been. I plan to go sometime, though. Oh, right. Well, yeah, you need to. It's a great tool. I've <laughs> I've never been there, but uh, Caddy Corner to Sun Studios, there was a, uh, a business there at one point called the Ketzel Cafe. And uh, this was before I met Kayla. I was with a, a group called the Memphis Mid-South Ghost Hunters at that time, and we got invited down there because there was a report that uh, they would often see this young guy at the end of the bar uh, down where the ladies tended to congregate. And this guy was uh, described as wearing like a rolled up white T-shirt and blue jeans and uh, with his hair slit back. So I don't know if that was was Elvis or who who it was, but uh, we did go down there and that, that spirit person interacted with us quite often. He would um, make equipment, respond to questions and that kind of thing. And he he definitely liked the women because <laughs> mm. I took a group in there one time. <laughs> I was doing workshops. And uh, so there was this really pretty lady that was in our group. And her her EMF meter was just going crazy, just going crazy. Nobody else in the groups was lighting up. And I said, well, let's let's just test this out. And I asked her to give it to me. As soon as she handed it off to me, it just went dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I handed it back to her, it went crazy again. So, yeah. This, uh, I don't know if that was Elvis, one of his cohorts, or, or somebody from that era. But uh, Yeah, we had a few buddies around. And also, that was, yeah. was, was like, being the birth of rock and roll, there was, you had people like Johnny Cash and Jerry Lee Lewis, Cole Perkins, and quite a few others as well. Right. So, yeah, it was interesting. Um it's also your BB King's um, play. I don't know on uh, on um, Bill Street, isn't it? Have you ever been mm-hmm. in that? Yep. A matter of fact, uh, I've been there a lot recently. You have. You work there now, don't BB you? King. Yes, I do. I actually been working down there. I love it there. Oh right. <laughs> I've never been yeah. in. I've only been on the outside. I've never been inside. Oh, you should come in. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, ma- fun. maybe next time if I if I manage to get back to Memphis again, I will go in there. But uh, <laughs> so I've, eat, I've eaten on several of the, of the uh, well, the eating places where you get the big burgers and chip and the fries and everything on Union Avenue. Uh, sorry, on Bill Street. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a couple of really nice places there. Anyway, we're not here to talk about food, are we? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, sorry, go on. We've done quite a few investigations in that area down mm-hmm. South Main Street. Uh, we did a bar mm-hmm. down there uh, called the Green Beetle. And that was actually, we had a TV crew with us for that one, and we had some things happen. And um, then there's another place called Ernestine and Hazel's, which is an old brothel uh, turned into a kind of a hamburger joint now. And uh, they have a, a jukebox that will 
if you're talking about a certain subject, the jukebox will come on by itself. I've experienced it, and it will. Uh, it's kind of a comment on what you're talking about. So there's a very playful spirit down there. Really, uh, that likes to to uh, do that type of uh, activity. Yeah. Hmm. Because it's also the cradle of the Civil War, isn't it, uh, Memphis? Um, do you do you ever experience um, any anything from the Civil War? I've been in a, a hotel that used that was used for a Civil War hospital uh, during that time era, um, and also I think they also used it during the 1878 uh, yellow fever yellow fever ex- uh, epidemic. And there was a lot of activity. We got called to a, an apartment down there. Uh, this, again, was before I started working with Kayla, but um, uh, there was a spirit in there, a female spirit, that was causing a lot of uh, activity. And so, yeah, I mean, all of downtown Memphis, Kayla will, will concur with me, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Whenever we go into that area for any reason, we can, you know, we're always kind of overwhelmed by the uh, energy there. Mm. It's, it's quite prevalent. Yeah, there's a lot of history there, isn't there? Like even mm-hmm. even back to like the slave days and uh, what about uh, that? There was the, the Sultana stunk, uh, sunk in the uh, in the uh, in the river, didn't it? There in the Mississippi um, after during the Civil War. I don't know if you've ever sort of investigated that or, or experienced anything from that. Yeah, and some of the, the steamboat. Actually. Yeah, it blew up, didn't it? Apparently, or, or, right. so, I was thinking, oh, yeah, it overloaded right. or something, didn't it? Yeah, I've talked to someone who actually located the remains of that. It's actually buried under a cotton field over on the Arkansas side now. Right. Um, the river's changed course, you know, a little bit here mm. and there over the years, but uh, I've never been able to quite pinpoint where that is. I would like to go over there maybe sometime, uh, take our team over there and see if we can connect with anyone. Yeah, sure. That sounds fun. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So you can do- I answer that? Sorry, go on. No, I was just thinking, um, this is just a bit of a left field comment. I don't know if you guys know anybody you've got drones, uh, or into archaeology. I was just thinking if you're trying to locate something, it might be worth going down that avenue, maybe? Right, right, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the coming technology for it, doesn't it? You know, all that. You, mm. It seems to be going on a lot now, doesn't it? I don't know what the legalities mm-hmm. of it is, but, uh. With drones, it's, probably similar to the states you've got you know if you're doing it commercially you've got to have a license that does cost money uh, yeah, that's true. yeah yeah but there are people there that you know they they've got some fantastic i've got a drone myself to be honest uh mm-hmm. well you do drone on a bit sometimes i know i know okay. yeah, yeah i've learned all i knew off you david <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, well we we're very careful never to trespass or anything. Always get permission yes, to go on yeah. property. In fact, oh, we, we have a legal permission form that we use as electronic thing, and we'll never even set foot in anyone's home unless we have you know their signature on that. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people will, if they hear hear of some location that's allegedly haunted, they will just you know trespass and go into yeah. their uh, that area and. Mm-hmm. That causes a lot of problems for for everyone, so we're we're real careful about that. Mm-hmm. We're respectful of other people's property. Of course, yeah. Well, and you want to keep a good name for your for your um, um, mm-hmm. service, don't you? Really. That's a, what, right. what would you say was your most interesting um, event? <laughs> Kayla, talk about that. Our most interesting event? Oh man, we've had so many different things. Which one do you want me to start with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell tell us about them all. <laughs> Which one do you feel is the most in, was, was the most interesting? Uh, one of the most interesting ones was I forget the location of this house because I work so much with the spirits that usually that's who and what I remember. But I remember this gentleman. He's very like old western. And he loved his liquor, and I was talking to him, and his energy, it made me feel dizzy and kind of lightheaded. You could tell that he was a heavy drinker and stuff, and I was talking to him, and he, we're talking about crossing him over, and he said, well, is there a beer in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jennifer, the other girl that has worked with us, she's like, it's an endless tap, and then he was going how, if he could bring his horse and stuff. So he is quite the character. But then there's this other, there's this younger boy in one of the rooms 
but I could feel that a mother, his mother or a guardian was around him, and it was interesting because this younger entity, he was alone. He had this guardian with him, but she was also a medium or psychic in her living life, but didn't necessarily learn. And she had talked to me some when I was helping him that she knew that she was going to be around him and try and help him, but she didn't necessarily know what she was doing. So it was just interesting for me as a psychic and medium to see an entity that's what we would call like earthbound Hmm. and communicate with me like that and not realize, you know, all that they are that they can do. That was one of the very, like, interesting, most interesting investigations for me, just because of that experience. Right. Do you get, do you, do you ever find your any, uh, do you get uh, scared at any investigations at all? Do you get anyone that's sort of quite nasty? Uh, there's definitely been, there's this one house we went to, and this is, uh, Steven, remember the entity where I took that dagger or that knife out of his chest? Right, mm. yes. So this house had some things going on in it, but the energy around this guy, he had passed away from a traumatic event. Someone, you know, murdered him and attacked him. So it was like this big black blob, like orb atmosphere around him. And it makes me feel very uncomfortable, very uneasy. Mm. I wouldn't necessarily say scared. I guess I... It's, there's some fear there, but it's not to the point where it makes me want to run from it. It's just extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. It's usually what I experience. Mm. But I'm always, you know, there's that curious side of me that always wants to kind of poke and prod at it and figure out, <laughs> well, what's going to happen next? You know? <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. But most of the time, you know, it, I, it's mostly exciting to me and just very interesting because I'm curious above all else. Yeah, I mean, I guess you probably know deep down that it can't really hurt you, can you? Unless you, unless you sort of allow it to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I suppose it depends how much you open up to something. I mean, uh, are you? Is it possible to get possessed? I've worked with people who claim to have been possessed. To me, it, it's not a total control type thing. They uh, tend to seem to be overshadowed. By the uh, spirit's energy, mm-hmm. maybe they they become sluggish, or uh, many times I've worked with families where the the wife will contact us and say, uh, the, the, "My husband has just had a total change of personality since we moved into this house. He used to be so sweet and kind, mm-hmm. and now just any little thing will set him off, and he's you know he's very angry all the time." So that to me is more of an overshadowing type thing. I think the only way that someone could um, become possessed if there is such a thing I've never witnessed it or experienced it is if they become so spiritually weakened and mm. they actually invite that in they they want that yeah um, I did work with a lady in Arkansas uh, who neglected to tell me uh, that she had had an exorcism performed on her and she her her uh, overshadowing came through the use of a Ouija board which is you know what is that a piece of cardboard and plastic planchette but it's the intent that's that's put behind the use of it. And her intent was to, uh, she started dreaming about this gentleman. He was, uh, well, he really was a gentleman. <laughs> he presented himself that way. He, it was a Civil War soldier. And so uh, he started coming through stronger and stronger, really sweet and kind in the beginning. And then she claimed he was assaulting her, you know, towards the end of this experience and everything. And I did go over there and spend the night in that house. I did witness any any of the things that she uh, claimed, um, you know, the events of uh, things being tossed and that type of thing. But, um, yeah, the, you know, there's been just rare instances of that type of thing. But I've never seen a, uh, you know, a complete possession. Right, yeah. Well, for anyone sort of listening that doesn't sort of understand the, the geography of where Memphis is, you got the the Mississippi and Arkansas is across the river, isn't it? So, so, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for everyone that might not realise that Arkansas is quite quite near to where Memphis is. Thank you. <laughs> We're actually in the the southwest corner of Tennessee, so right below us. I mean, 15 minutes from us is Mississippi, yeah. which has a lot of history of the you know blues musicians mm. and. And, uh, of course, Civil War activity occurred all over this area. And then right across the river is Arkansas. So we, 
we serve those areas and also we, we will go into, uh, Kentucky and Missouri and Alabama and Arkan, uh, and, uh, Louisiana just, just, uh, not very far into those days, but we do occasionally get some, some, uh, you know, requests for help from those people too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, also, also, um, back to Elvis again. If you go further south, you can go to Tupelo, can't you? I don't know if you've ever That's done true. that. Yep. Right. Have you ever been to his birthplace? I haven't, no. Uh, we did go to a house, uh, early on when I was, in, I've been doing this for 18 years, so I've been with a couple other groups before this. Hmm. And in my early days, we got called to a house, uh, that was bordering the, let's see, that would be the eastern side of Graceland. And the lady that owned the house was one of the fan club presidents. Right. And apparently Elvis's mother, uh, was, made appearances in that house. And we actually recorded female voice while we were in there. Oh, right. So I think, I think his influence, uh, you know, spread throughout that whole area around Graceland. And, uh, there's been a lot of sightings. I've talked to a lot of people that had, had different experiences there. Yeah. You know? Well, it certainly changed from the first time I went there. Um, it, it's kind of a, it's built up like an almost like a Disney world now, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, when I first went there, it was uh, like just like small shops and things, but else seemed to, seemed to have all been bought up or disappeared into the big conglomerate. But uh, yeah, it's a shame in some ways, but I suppose it just um, shows how sort of popular it still is. You know, with you know, thousands of people go there every year. But uh, um, yeah, well, I don't know, um, Juliet, you got something to say? <laughs> Pull me out of this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Tra -la 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 -la. I was going to actually talk about Elvis. Oh, Elvis, good. absolutely fantastic. I've never been, and uh, the only place I've been when I visited the States was New York, which was fantastic. Oddly enough, I went the year before 9/11, and on the last day, I actually went up the Twin Towers, which mm. was absolutely bizarre, wonderful mm. place. I was wondering. This is more from my sort of point of history. Elvis, very famous. Have you found that groups? I've actually tried to capitalise in a monetary way on this. You know, I really admire you two, you know, just for doing things, for, which is the best way. Have you found perhaps some groups have just tried to make money out of it? Does, does that annoy you? What do you think? Kayla? <laughs> I can't, well, I don't know anyone personally in this area that's like that. Mm. Yeah. I can think of. I mean, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the ghost shows where they go in and antagonize entities and yeah. don't really help anyone. You know that. I mean, mm. I understand the market for that and the entertainment mm. there, but it's like you know, with my gifts and my experience, I see them as people. You know. Yeah. So it kind of hurts me to see that. I never really got into their shows or watched them when I was younger. You know, a lot of people make references to those shows or talk about it to me because they're like, oh, you know, you're a medium and you, you speak with entities and stuff. I'm like, listen to about th those guys are me. <laughs> yeah. They kind of sensationalize yeah. it a little bit, don't they? Or quite a lot, actually. Yeah. You know, yes. uh, do, you feel, do you feel that they give the, the uh, I'm not going to say business, but um, the, the whole thing a bad name? You know, I've, I've been in uh, a couple of situations where, uh, well-known haunted uh, establishments mm -hmm. did try to capitalize on that. And there was a, a place I went to uh, years years ago down in Alabama. It was an inn. And I actually invited a group of friends down there uh, for a weekend. And the people there were very protective of their spirits. So when <laughs> we went through and started uh, trying to you know, help so many spirits transition, release, the lady came and said, what are you doing? I said, well, we're, we're just trying to help them. And she said, we don't want them to go. And the reason yeah. she didn't want them to go is because it would have hurt her bottom line. <laughs> you know? Mm. They had that reputation yeah. of being haunted, which drew guests there. And uh, so we went back anyway later that night and did a little work. But Because, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's more important. This is really kind of sacred work to us. That's why we never charge sure. for any of it. And uh, we just want to, you know, utilize the gifts that we've been blessed to have. Uh, to try to help these people get to where they need to be because they're, they really are stuck and they really don't know what to do many times. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would think that they, they are in quite a 
bad mental time or that actually if they don't know where they are like that um right i mean yeah, we had a little girl we found in a closet one time in a midtown uh, a house mm-hmm. in midtown memphis remember that kayla and she was uh, all she would say is uh the house is on fire right. house is on fire so we're, yeah. we're energy channels and we were able to kind of project some uh positive energy to her to where she was able to kind of break out of that mental fog and that loop yeah. that she was you stuck can, in um even there's one entity I came across. He is actually from the Europe area. I have no idea how uh, he floated or ended up over here, but he was a piano player and he had really bad, he had amnesia though, and he didn't realize where he was or what was happening or that he had even passed. Um, and then even with that guy that I helped take that dagger out of, he just had so much betrayal and hurt and pain that was just, there that he needed help releasing and sometimes that's all they need hmm. wow what was interesting about the, the guy with the dagger he was a young he was a young uh, guy mm-hmm. and if you had gone into that room if you were at all sensitive you would have most people would have interpreted that as malevolent energy or threatening um, mm-hmm. but he was really just anguish and you know he was so he was so uh, disturbed by what had happened to him and Kayla was just intuitively guided to reach out and of course it was it was all metaphysical type stuff and just pull that dagger out of what he perceived to be in his chest and as soon as she did that his whole demeanor changed and he lightened you know his energy lightened up and we were able to work with him at that point wow but most people would have turned and run away from that or you know Mm. started shouting at the person or you know Um, that that reminds me of this other um I'm trying to remember which house this was, but there's an entity, and this this woman had been in an accident, but she didn't separate, I guess, her entity's image from her accident, so she did, if a child saw her, she would look scary, but she wasn't trying to be scary, and she wasn't demonic or anything like that, she just appeared scary because she still had her wounds to whatever happened to her. Um, I think this is the woman that someone threw boiling water on her Ooh, or right. something after her skin, acid or something like that, because I remember the way mm-hmm. her wounds looked on her face, and I knew that. If, I think there might have been children in this home that we investigated, and I think one of them might have seen her and been scared, but she wasn't mean by any terms. She was just wounded. Mm. Right. Her mental image of herself mm-hmm. was was her last memory. And there were there was a very intuitive young girl uh, in this family, and she w- she had seen this woman several times, and the woman was actually coming to her to try to get help because she knew the child was intuitive and could see her, but she didn't realize how much she was frightening the little girl. Wow. Well. So we reminded her what she looked like. We talked with her and counseled her, and that's always our our job is to hear their story and to try to find out what's disturbing them. And once we realized what had happened to her and we were able to take her thoughts and her mind off of that, she could remember what she looked like before and she, you know, we were able to help her transition at that point. Hmm. What are your, what are your so views? a lot of psychology. Sorry, what are your views on the reincarnation? Do you, do you believe it happens? Kayla? I do personally, yeah, definitely. I feel like I personally had visions of other lives that I've lived and stuff. I believe that, you know, we come back and we have a choice to come back and things as that such. I'll probably come back again to help or do what I can where I can. I mean, this isn't the first time I've decided to do this. Um, I feel like a lot of reincarnation, too, goes along with your freedom of will. Because from my experience and what I've seen, you, you never lose your free will that is something that is very much respected within the world of energy and on the other side Hmm. but I you know I've read about the Akashic records I don't know if you've ever heard about that like the soul's history and stuff like that and other lives almost like a soul's diary Akashic records like other lives you've lived Hmm. so I'm I definitely resonate with that stuff personally I believe in it I'm here for it I was just saying, being being a medium or, or clever as you are, do you not actually get? F- <laughs> it's hard to, to, to describe it. Do you not actually get feelings of your previous lives? 
You know, sometimes I feel like I've definitely had, well, I've definitely had people from my other lives visit me, like in spirit. Because mm. even though in my body and my mind, if I don't remember them from this life physically, a part of my soul does. And they never seem like strangers to me. I'm not necessarily sure how I know them, but I knew that I've been in a life with them before. But there are some things I remember, or sometimes I have visions of my other lives, you know. I believe in every life we come in, we're here to learn something and to carry it into our next life. So I think and I feel that when I have these visions and everything, I'm remembering things that I made it a means to learn in my other lives to bring into this one. Yeah. I must admit, I, I've, I've experienced that when you actually meet someone, you think, mm-hmm. I kind of know you already, but uh, or, or you or you become yeah. close quite mm-hmm. quickly, don't you? And uh, mm-hmm. they, they, I suppose that could be some sort of a, um, you know, from past lives. There's I don't even, know. Definitely, yeah, at times I've met people in the physical world that I might have had another life with in somewhere other part of the world or even dimension or reality mm. i'm not putting anything past me at this point you know i talk to entities so i can't really say oh, i don't know if that exists <laughs> yeah yeah what about uh, oh, what about you I, Stephen? Do you, uh, what's your take on reincarnation sorry Julia, you can have a go in a minute yeah i agree i've, <laughs> I've had this i've had similar experiences where i've met people and and um it was just like i've known them forever and that type of thing and uh our teacher is a well-known trans medium her name is ellie fristinski and she's the one that puts together those reunions of her students and everything but she uh, you know she uh, is also able to uh, access the Akashic Records. So I've had reading with her, and I've had many lifetimes according to her reading. And a lot of the places she talks about when I've traveled around the world felt really familiar to me, like uh, Edinburgh, uh, and also I've been in Ukraine um, at, at different times, and those areas felt just strangely familiar to me when I was there. Wow. And she also says that we travel in soul groups, and so uh, these soul groups tend to reincarnate together at different times, and roles are reversed, you know, uh, to uh, help you learn whatever life lesson you come in to learn, you know, during this particular lifetime. So maybe Kayla and I knew each other in a different lifetime, or maybe we were brothers and or sisters, you know, in another lifetime in a different part of the, the world or whatever, different time periods. So. Sure. You just meet those people, and yeah, it's just a familiarity that uh, is hard to, you know, pass by. Yeah. Do you think our lives are actually preconceived? You know, that, like they're going to, um, that there's a path that we are put onto. I don't. I think I, I think it's all free will. I I believe that there is some sort of blueprint or structure, but the best part of it is that we choose how we get to the end goal in a sense, I guess. Yeah, I think I, 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 I think I agree with that. I think there's an end point that you get yeah. to. It's just the, uh, how you I get. I feel like there's an ultimate, there's an ultimate goal, but we get to decide how we paint and pave the road the rest of the way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, through your decisions that, that you make, how to get there. Goal. Yeah. Yeah, free will is so important, but uh, mm-hmm. I agree. I think we might choose our destination and, you know, the time period we want to come into and maybe our gender or whatever, our uh, race and that type of thing, so that we can have experiences that we haven't had before. Yeah, sure. You know, different parts of the world or different cultures and that type of thing. But it all boils down to lessons that you want to, uh, you know, to overcome different things that you struggle with or whatever, and you it's all about enlightenment, in my estimation, and awareness, increasing your awareness. So that, again, is what we try to help uh, the spirits that we work with. We try to help them raise their vibration or their awareness to where they're able to see what's ahead of them. Absolutely. And rather yes. than stay stuck here in this kind of mundane existence, uh, there's so much more for them. Yeah, sure. Sorry, Julia, you wanted to have a go about something, didn't you? No, it was just uh, <laughs> absolutely fascinating listening to you about uh, talking about sort of reincarnation, I just hazard a thought, and I thought, ooh, must ask this to you both. <laughs> Hypnotism, hypnotic regression, what do you think, and have either of you ever had that done? I am I, always very ahead. curious, but I've never, I've never done anything like that. I've always been very curious, and mm-hmm. with my experiences and the way, like, with the group meditations and stuff I've done... I'm kind of like, that would make me a little nervous because I feel like it would work really well, but that's another reason why it's so exciting. (laughs) 
There is a reason I'm asking that, but I, I, I shall let on when you've both explained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've experienced that in our, in our reunions with our teacher. They, uh, we've had um, people that kind of specialize in regressions, and I've seen it. I've seen it done, and I've um, you know heard people talk talk about their life experiences and you know see that type of thing. It's not. I don't think it's much as much hypnosis as, as it is just really really deep relaxation type techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, where they're able to really focus and let those memories flood up. Um, and in the early days, I worked with a, a gentleman uh, who's very intuitive, and he actually went into um, hypnosis and was trained in that. And I've often thought, maybe I need to go and have him do that for me, but I haven't done it at this point. So, so what was this you were going to tell us, Julia? Uh, no, there, there was a good reason I was asking that. Many, many, many years ago, my dad would go out and he used to play uh, the organ. And I was like, Dad, wh- where'd you go? And he used to work for a hypnotist. And he's called Richard Lord Payne. If you were to Google him, Pathé Newsreel, Richard Lord Payne, he's actually on there from 1949. And he looks like one of those you see in the films. Tall, piercing eyes, goatee beard. Mm. And he was like that in real life as well. The upshot of that was he taught my dad, he taught my mum, he taught me. And it's one of those when, you know, you sort of said, oh, what can you do? I sometimes forget I can do it. So it's one of those, I, I agree with you, there's this part of it, if you put somebody under it, it's intuition from the person, but some of it, you could get somebody and they speak a different language. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's such an interesting subject that I think within this community... It's not been thoroughly explored, hence I brought it up. Yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, we've got the equipment. Oh, do you use a camera? Do you do this? Do you do that? Or do you do it the old-fashioned way? And to me, it's just something different that could be done. So I just wanted to throw that in the mix, basically, and sort of briefly explain my connection to it. Mm. It's an interesting yeah. subject, put it that way. <laughs> Like that is interesting. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, by the way. Great. Hey, right. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, when if you ever see a film or you see something on telly and it's like, put your hands together and then it cuts away. The reason they do that, some people are quite subject, not subjective, um, easily influenced, shall we say. Mm-hmm. You can look at, at an audience and you can sort of look at people and think, right, you could have a hundred people, but you get five. To be honest, all you need is one person for a show. Mm-hmm. It's, it's weird to, it, people watching as well. I will never do that and you're asleep. <laughs> 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 it is fascinating. And I've had it done to me, so it's not like I'm sort of going, yeah, 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 yeah. And then it's like, put your hands together, you're asleep. You, to me, it always sounds better coming from a male. I know that sounds probably slightly sexist, but sometimes... A female. Then again, I don't know. I think I sound like a bloke, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen people trying to sort of do their hands together, and it's like, what have you done? I put glue on them. No. <laughs> but when I was a teenager, I was quite naughty with it. I remember hypnotising a friend. We used to work at a ice show, and I hypnotised her. She sort of came out of the trance, and it was like, so what do you think of the show? Everybody's naked. Are they? Are you sure? <laughs> oh, no. Or change the name, or if there were... But then again, you can use it for good. You know, if you're trying to get rid of some negative energy, if you're trying to sort of dig for some history that you just can't find anywhere else, mm. or you're trying to stop somebody smoking. Right. Silly, silly things like that. There are good things that can be done with it. Oh, all sorts of things done... nowadays, isn't it? People use it for... Oh, God, good if you... But if it's not done correctly, she used it to stop smoking. She said it helped a lot, actually, for her. But you, you can sort of talk about neuro linguistic programming. You know, you can mm-hmm. tie it in with meditation. To me, it's another tool in the bag. Mm. I'll shut up now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I love it. I think it's so interesting because right before Skype call, I was um, actually on YouTube and I was looking at some like. I like to, you know, just, I am super interested in the psyche and psychology and, you know, neurology and all that stuff. And I was watching videos on stuff kind of similar to what you're talking about. So I was like, she would bring this up. This is amazing. <laughs> well, well, find me on social media later. We can hook oh, yeah. up and I can, I can send you a link to the video you take. Honestly, because 
when when my father and I found it, and he was like, look, look, and he got, he, he got all excited, and I was like, oh my god, that's what he looked like when he was younger. But it was part of the magic circle as well, you see, mm. which was even more. In- and I was I was sort of reading, and then it was just fascinating. Some of the backstory he like hypnotised a, a football team, mm. <laughs> like you do. But it was just weird. <laughs> the more I read, I was like, oh my goodness! See, I knew him when he was sort of in his seventies. I can learn and I can do hypnosis on entities and help them cross over. That'd be interesting. Yeah, that would be like, something we, I think. <laughs> that would be a new angle, wouldn't it? <laughs> this is what I, mean. I think possibly, if, like I said, if you want to sort of discuss it, I, I don't have a problem with it. I can sort of throw it and go, look, and you can go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> it's or, because we say that we're like social services for entities, you know, because we, we have to counsel them and talk to them yeah. and, you know, help them. Because it's all about, you know, their spiritual well-being and their psyche, because that's what they're, that's what they are at that point. Hey, if it helps you at the end of the day, I'm, I'm quite, I'll help anybody, mm. you know, that's, that's what I do, that's what myself and David do, we just try and educate. Yeah. We, uh, well, we get education, obviously speaking to people like you, this is why, this is why I do this, because I learn a little bit for every show, you know, from people, <laughs> and um, yeah, you know, I think we're all on this road of trying to learn from each other, you know. Um, do you, on your on your investigations, do you use any uh, instruments, and uh, or do you not need them because of your uh, capabilities? Yeah, I only uh, I used to carry a lot of equipment in the early days uh, for maybe the first four or five years on when I was investigating uh, before my clairsentience kind of kicked in. But these days, I only take an audio recorder. I'll turn that on since we walk into the residence or business uh, just to document everything. Right. And then I do carry an, uh, a little EMF meter with me, and a lot of times I will give that to the client because that makes them feel a little bit more involved. Sure. And, uh, they love that. You know, they've seen all the TV shows, so and they can see they, some. They can see some sort of result, I suppose. You know, if it lights, right. if it lights up, and, you know. I've also, yeah, I've also discovered that a lot of times entities will uh, choose to be very selective about who they'll interact with. Mm. So. If they've had experience, you know, interacting with the homeowner, it makes more sense to allow the homeowner to carry that piece of equipment. But typically what I use that for is uh, we will go in and uh, check the wiring in a location because that can affect psychological, um, you know, perceptions. Sure. If, there, if the wiring's off or if there's excessive EMF fields in, in the location. And also, we went into a house. Uh, this was very interesting. Uh, this is when Jennifer was working with us. We went to this lady's house. And typically, when we walk into a place, immediately we connect with spirits if there's anyone there. And we get a lot of information. It starts just flooding in. And we were all just kind of like walked into a fog. And actually... I'm sure Kayla will talk about this in a minute. It was actually disturbed. I mean, it was kind of uh, hurt. It kind of hurt in a sense. It was. It I was, was going to say it was very uh, heavy, like static, all in my brain. Right. All the frequencies. And we couldn't distinguish. You know, we could tell there was someone there, but it was like they were very far off, and we just weren't able to make a really strong connection. And what was going on was this lady's property backed up to these uh, high-voltage transmission lines that literally ran across her backyard, yeah. the way the, the lines ran. And I've never, I don't think I've ever been in a house where the entire house was, ba- was, was bathed in such an excessive EMF feel. And this lady, unfortunately, developed some uh, health issues because of that. And... Uh, but we called our guides in. You know, our guides are always available to help us and work with us, and we asked them to make some adjustments. And as soon as they, they did that, these are our spirit guides, mm-hmm. uh, we were able to, to start uh, making some stronger connections. But that was a really weird uh, situation. And if I hadn't had that EMF meter with me, uh, to check that, I would not really have understood what was going on. Yeah, sure. It doesn't sound like a very place to, healthy place to be living, doesn't it? With all that no. uh, EMF around. I mean, right. we're surrounded with uh, Wi-Fi and everything as it is <laughs> with, with everything. Yeah. <laughs> but with the audio recordings, what I found is when I started working with mediums, uh, you know, it's specifically right around 2007, I used to record a lot of EVPs, a lot of spirit voices on audio recordings. 
And when I started working with mediums, that all basically dried up. And I, I theorized the reason for that is, you know, would they prefer to talk to a, a piece of equipment or a machine or hmm. expend the energy to put a voice on a, an audio or a video recorder when there's a person there that can actually hear their thoughts in real time and, and have a dialogue with them? So that all changed dramatically at that point. Hmm. So. They said, uh, uh, when you go there from uh, from Memphis, have you been down to Nashville at all? Because uh, that's another interesting old town, or city, I should say. I've worked a couple of cases around Nashville, uh, but not actually right in the city. Uh, we got we got con- we were contacted by a young gentleman who wanted us to come to a building there in downtown Nashville. This is when Kayla and I first got together uh, to do this work, and. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to provide the permission that we require. And uh, uh-huh. apparently what was going on was this was a building that was being used for satanic worship in the basement. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot of, a lot of activity and, and things going on and probably could have really benefited from a, a clearing. We do vibrational clearings, but since he was not able to provide the the permission. I think it was just someone who worked there or knew of it and wanted us to come in and, and check it out. But again, we don't go, we don't set foot on anybody's property without legal permission. Hmm. Now, I just wonder if it would, if, you know, because it was a, a very, like Tennessee in that area is a very music orientated. Do you get much, um, do you pick up much from mu- uh, uh, dead musicians, let's say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, apart from you, from apart from Elvis, I mean, there's there's, there's, lo- no, there's loads of others, not, aren't there? Not personally. Um, most of our work is in is private homes, so um, people know from our testimonials on our website that we're able to do this work mm. and do it effectively and quickly. And a lot of people go into a house and they'll spend three or four hours, sometimes into the wee hours of the night. Right. Uh, mm. doing these investigations and bring in tons of equipment the, the family's displaced or the children have to be somewhere overnight typically we can go in and do our work within an hour or two at the most right. depending on the side of the house and uh, so we go in from 7 to 9 typically on a Friday night or a Sunday night and we ask the children to be out of the house because you never know what's going to happen mm. but their, their kids are back in by you know 9 o'clock and ready for bed and all that so it's all right. We don't. Uh, it doesn't take that long when, if you have the uh, abilities where you can actually get in and find out what's going on and to uh, affect that positive change that everybody wants, not only the homeowners but the spirits too. Sure. Yeah. What's your opinion of uh, Ouija boards or um, spirit boards? I don't like yeah. them. You freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yay. So I like them I, there, there are people I know that still use it. Most of the people I know now don't use things like that because a lot of us are mediums. I am the Ouija board or spirit mm. box. You know, I don't need that to communicate with them. And the reason why I don't like Ouija boards, now the history of Ouija boards, they came out around, I think, World War Two or one, one of those... Uh, they used it to get money and to market, you know, because people wanted to talk to their loved ones or know what was going on. Mm. But what they didn't realize is that they did create a device with the intention to open up a connection to whatever's on the other side. And that's what's dangerous about it. You know, you're talking to whoever and whatever, and you don't know their intention. And if you're not educated within these things, it can be dangerous or scary. Yeah, sure. Um, Stephen actually remembers we did a house investigation in Mississippi, and the owner had, during the investigation, after a little bit, had opened up to us and said that she used a Ouija board one time when she was 16. And actually, the entity, the man that was in her house, it was a bigger military man, and he was, he wasn't demonic by no means, but he was very unkind and ugly, especially to feminine energies. Hmm. And he actually came from that. So when it comes to things like that, that's where I tell people, you know, it's not really worth that type of risk. Yeah, sure. I mean, the crazy thing is they sell them as a, a child's toy, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I don't quite understand. 
Maybe well, that's why know, Toys R Us went out of business. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, it's, it's just a it's a card piece of cardboard and it's a plastic planchette. You could do the same thing with on with a piece of paper, draw all the numbers and letters yeah. out. Well, we, so, yeah. we used to do I that when I was a, when I was a, a glass. Yeah. yeah, when I was a teenager, yeah. we we used to do that, make numbers of things and yeah. put them around a the table and uh, <laughs> have the glass. Right. So yeah. But, so, uh, but, but again, it's the intent, and and I've been in the most extreme houses I've been is is where people have used Ouija boards or done occult practices, spells, and things like that. And it's the same concept. Uh, you wouldn't want to open your door tonight and just leave your door open all night long, and just whoever walked by could come in. Sure, yeah. Uh, during the middle of the night, so it's the same sure. thing because when people typically use these Ouija mm. boards, they're using them for thrills and chills. Mm-hmm. And they just want to see if they can get some kind of response. And a lot of times they'll draw in these low level, malevolent type, uh, trickster energies and they're hard to get rid of. They really are. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause you're supposed to close them down, um, properly, aren't you, afterwards? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and keep the planchette away from the board. You're not supposed to store right. it with the board. I was, uh, reliably informed anyway. <laughs> right. Now, we, you, in, in Memphis, now you had a, a very big murder, uh, years ago with Martin Luther King. Have you ever had any, mm-hmm. um, anything from that? No, I've never been down around the Lorraine Motel. Uh, never had the opportunity to go in there and, and, uh, you know, just tour it or see if I feel energy there. Have you, Kayla? <clears throat> No, I haven't. That would be interesting to explore one day, though, definitely. Mm. Yeah, because you've got uh, many, many historical figures uh, from that area, haven't you? uh... Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, what about you, Juliet? You got anything more to to add? I'll probably think of loads more (laughs) after this. That's that's usually the problem, yeah. Well, it's usually the case, isn't it? But the opportunity, like I said to both of you, if you want to find me on, see, Juliet's not a particularly common name, although David does insist on calling me a a complete variety (laughs) and variation on it. Yeah, we won't won't go into that. (laughs) Yes. If you want to look me up about the hypnotism thing, not a problem at all. If not, I would urge you to look into It's just interesting subject. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm definitely going to bug you about that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, here's a link. Here's a blog that myself and my dad wrote. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Me, it's, just, <laughs> it's helping one another. It's, it's like David said earlier, you know, Every time he does a show, you know, when I join him as a guest presenter, I learn something. I've, you know, met some wonderful people who are now friends. And to me, it's mm. like, oh, I don't think of that. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to do that. To me, it's like, we may never meet, but through the marvelous world of technology, Christ, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> Before it'd be like, I'll write you a letter, not get there in about all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's very true. Or, uh, make it over. Yeah, make it over to Memphis. Be sure and uh, get in touch with us, and we'll take you around, and show you the sites. Oh, well, really, Steve, oh, Steve and Kate, I wish, I wish, I mean, in, on my trips to Memphis that I've had, I wish I'd known you then, because I'd, I would have, uh, I would have taken you up on it. A good barbecue, <laughs> maybe make gumbo, hang out. <laughs> but what you, I'll tell you what you need to do. And I don't know if you've thought about it, but you two need to get to together and write a book about um, what what you do in Memphis. Actually, I'm working on a guidebook of Spirit Rescue. You are doing it. Oh, right. I must, I must be sorry. Yeah, I plan to, <laughs> plan to publish. I was hoping to publish it this year, but uh, it's slowed down a little bit because of different reasons, but uh, I do plan to get it out uh, by the spring. Oh, great. Because I'll, I'll be definitely yeah, interested. It'll have some tips for people that are Me intuitive too. and want to, to get, uh, want to put together a, a, an intuitive type investigation team rather than a more equipment based and to uh, learn the techniques that we use to help spirits uh, cross over. So we'll have all that in there and some personal stories. Excellent. Oh, you have to give me a tip when it's coming out. Um, yeah, okay. Because you've got, me too. I'll tell you what, for our listeners out there, you've got a, a great uh, website uh, where, where you tell you know, tell everyone exactly what you're getting up to, and it's a very good website. It's, a, it's very nice, very really well laid out and everything. And what I'll do, I'll put a, a link to it on the Paranormal Dimensions Facebook page, so anyone wants to... Uh, to find out about it, and you, you may get a few more visitors. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, that. 
But, uh, yeah, it's been great talking to you both. Anyway, thank you so much for sparing the time for coming on. It's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. Thank you um, for the opportunity. No, it's it's great. I hope you'll come back again, perhaps sometime. And, um, love to. Yeah, great. So, yeah, thank you, Stephen and Kayla. It's been great fun. And thank you, Juliet, once again for helping out. No, thank you. Absolutely fantastic, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, the time's gone. Well, nice to meet you both. The time's gone quick again. And you, Stephen and Kayla, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you. And um, for all our listeners out there, you've been listening to the Paranormal UK Radio Network. I'm David Young and Juliet as well. And uh, thank you for listening and uh, tuning in again next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Paranormal Dimensions is as bright and powerful as our celestial star, the sun. And although it's expending thousands of pounds of energy every minute of the day, have no fear. There's plenty left. Dimensions is a regular feature on Mondays on the Paranormal UK radio network.